This is Jerry Fry, audio historian of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. The following is the professional history of a PPB member told by herself in her own fashion on March the 31st, 2016. These interviews are being recorded in order to compile firsthand a living history of the members of our organization and stories of their professional experiences. Many of our members began in what is called the Golden Age of Radio and Television, and this is an attempt to preserve as much data as possible for succeeding generations. This recording is not intended for broadcast without first obtaining permission from Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. With me today on the phone from Glendale, California, is Mary Mill Knudsen, a board member of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. How are you today, Mary Mill? Just fine. How are you, Gary? Doing well, thank you. Very beauti- beautiful day here in Southern California, as, as it often is. Yes, indeed. Aren't we lucky? <laughs> we sure are. Well, let's begin at the very beginning of your life, Mary Mill. Tell, us, oh my. T- tell me where you were born and when you were born, and we'll go from there. Uh, well, I was born in Los Angeles. I lived, We first lived in La Habra, California. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. And uh, what what was your 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 childhood like? What did your father do for a living, for instance? Well, he was uh, mayor of the town at one point, and he was uh, police commissioner. Really? He had the big uh, 33 earthquake. Oh. Uh, he had to go out and, you know, see what was going on and take care of people that were, there was one lady that was lying in a irrigation ditch and um, she wouldn't come out because she was afraid of another quake. Oh yeah, sure. That was in 1933 you said? I think it was, yes. Yeah, La Havre. La Havre, L-A-H-A-B-R-A. Right. Refresh my memory exactly, where is La Havre? You know where Whittier is? Yes. It's just over the hill from Whittier, or over the hill. It's right next door. <laughs> okay, okay, great. And your mother was a homemaker, I assume? Oh, she had been a teacher. Oh, really? Uh, yes, uh-huh. at that point she was. <laughs> yeah. Any brothers and sisters? No, but I was saved from being an only child by my uh, mother's Sister, younger sister who had uh, two kids, cousins, oh. and uh, that we were. My girl cousin was about uh, five months younger than I, and people thought we were twins. <laughs> and the, and yeah. her, her brother was about uh, <clears throat> twenty-one months younger than that. So they lived nearby. Yeah, they lived in Whittier. Uh huh. Well, at least you have some playmates built in, didn't you? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And how about you? You went to uh, elementary school in La Habra, I assume? No, uh, we moved to Los Angeles, and I went to a private school at kindergarten, and uh, I went to John Burroughs Junior High School, Mm -hmm. L.A. High School, and um, Washington State college it was now it's now called Washington State University right so when you were in uh, elementary school and high school did you what what was your course of study what were you aiming to be well I loved radio did you yeah yeah I used to go see all the the shows I could see you know (laughs) get tickets for this that and the other thing and uh, oh I ushered at the Hollywood Bowl Uh that was fun and uh, then, was your interest in radio spurred by uh, the the game shows, the comedies, or music? What what kind of shows did you like to listen to? Well, I had uh, a second cousin, Lamont Johnson, who uh, was a an actor, beautiful voice. Yeah, I re- direct. I remember him. I remember hearing him on the radio. Oh, yes. He had a gorgeous voice. He had a tubercular hip, so he didn't do much on television. Uh, But he was a wonderful director. And I remember he uh, also... I went to the dress rehearsal of this uh, opera, 
that he was conducting down at uh, the music center and uh, just fascinating. Marty Nixon, I think, was doing the uh, lead role. And uh, gosh, I hadn't thought about that in a long time, so I can't, don't have ready answers. But it was just terrific. Well, that sounds wonderful. So he he spurred your interest in radio drama and and uh, yes, uh huh. But you went to audience you went to audience shows as well. The, oh yes, yes, yes. Yes. And I went to mostly at CBS, NBC, and stuff like like that. And one time, mm -hmm. my girlfriend and I went to a movie. Uh, up at the Pantages, I think. And I said, well, let's see, see if we can't get some tickets to something. And uh, I don't know what took us down to KHJ, but, because uh, I'd never been there before. Mm. And walked in, talked to a nice young lady on the information desk, and we got to talking, and I said, well, how did you get your job here? And well, she told me who the, uh, oh, the gal, so if you want a job, to go see this Eve Grayson, I think her name was. At any rate, so I, I went, came back, and uh, got a job. Oh, well, really... well that's, that was uh, later on in your life. Right now we're still in high school, and then you went to Washington State College. How did you get up there? Well, I think we're a little ahead of the game here. Um, I started out at KHJ, had to... I, <laughs> I barely fit into the uh, one of the uniforms to, to usher oh. the shows, but that was, I'll, I'll skip ahead a little bit. Um, that's where I met Art Gilmore, and that's one of the reasons he heard, heard that we were, uh, my, my girlfriend worked there as an usher late, later too. Anyway, um, he, we, he heard that we were thinking about going to Washington State, and he said, oh, you've got to go, that's where my... I, my wife and I went, and uh, it's just great school spirit and blah, 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 you know. So that's what we finally did. Ah, so you were actually working at KHJ before you went to WSU. Oh, right, right. Yeah, okay, gotcha. I was, I was in high school, uh, and then, uh, yeah, a little after, in between high school and college. Well, when you when you were hired at KHJ, what was your job? I started out uh, as a uh, an usher, usherette, uh -huh. and then they put me on the on the information desk. And I forget Erskine Johnson was there, and I did some typing for him. And I was a mail girl there too, delivering mails to the various offices. And oh, I just loved that place. It was just wonderful. <laughs> so you knew how to type. You were, did you take typing in high school? Yes. Ah, oh, good. Now you were an usherette. That what kind of audience shows did KHJ do in those days? Well, for one, uh, Smile Time, which was uh, is uh, pardon me, I've got a gravel in my voice today. <clears throat> um. Steve Allen and Wendell Lyles, no, Wendell Noble, had a show called Smile Time. And uh, he was married to his first wife then. And he <coughs> bought a great big uh, five pound box of C's candy and put it on the, inf on the information desk and said, I had a boy, you have a piece of candy. <laughs> wow. Five that pounds. was kind of fun. Yeah. We had some wonderful people there. Uh, Glenn Hardy in the news. Fred Shields did the uh, did the uh, commercials on that show. Fred Yakis was the newspaper of the air. He used to get a uh, oh percolator and put hot water in it, and then uh, he'd say, "Listen to it fizz," no. and it would go, you know. Psh -psh. And he did it at one time. He forgot to put the water in. He said, listen to it, fizz, clunk. Uh-oh. <laughs> but he was a wonderful guy. And Glenn Hardy was, too. And Art, uh, Art Gilmore was uh, uh, the announcer on Red Rider with Tommy Cook. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. This little beaver. I'm trying to think of other ones. Oh, they had, oh, we had some wonderful shows that were not audience shows, but like, uh, mm-hmm. oh, the case book of Gregory Hood with uh, Elliot Lewis. And some Johnny Madero, Pier 23, with uh, Jack Webb. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and... Uh, Was Red Rider an audience show? No. No. But it was so much fun to watch, you know, with the sound men and everything. Oh, I bet it was, yeah. I I, I know that uh, Tommy Cook was one of several Little Beavers. Uh, Frank Brzee had played that role also. On the radio? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I knew knew Frank from high school. (laughs) Oh, did you? From high school, huh? Uh-huh. That's right. He went to L.A. High. I'd forgotten that. Yes. Sure. And uh, all these things, you know, like the Magic Castle and stuff like that. Oh, I went to high school with uh, Bill Larson, who started the Magic Castle with his wife and his brother, Milt Larson. Yes. I, I met Lip Milt when I worked with Ralph Edwards. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. And, uh, let me see. But it was just the, oh, they had Family Theater on KHJ and, oh, so many of you know, those good old things. Met so many actors and actresses. Virginia Gregg, oh, I just loved her. And she married Jaime Del Valle. And, uh, you, did you know him? No, I, I did not. But you're mentioning names that I remember distinctly listening to the radio growing up, yeah. in, growing up in Spokane. You, wow, I didn't know that. I, I, uh, you know, I went to Washington State, which was just below Spokane. Oh, I know it well. My sister worked at the well, library there for many, many years. At, at, at the Washington State? Yes. Oh, really? Yep. No, it's a small I, I, world, isn't it, sometimes? <laughs> I, I very nearly went to D- Washington State myself, uh, right out of, out of high school. Uh, they offered me a scholarship, but I got a, a better scholarship, a bit more money from uh, Whitman College in Walla Walla. So that's, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so, Walla Walla, the little town they loved so much, they named it twice. That's correct, absolutely. <laughs> and I loved it so much I didn't want to leave, but I had to leave to make a yeah. living. <laughs> Oh, well, that's the way it goes. You couldn't get a job down there? I had a job at the the, the mutual radio station, yes, but uh, uh, I was ambitious in those days, thinking I would eventually end up in Hollywood. Uh, yes. So I decided to go on out and get a little television experience as well as, to, as radio. Well, but, that's wonderful. Well, I did end up in Hollywood, but not on the radio. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So well, I just... I tell you, it used to be so wonderful working at KHJ. I thought, all oh, this, and they pay me, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so many of the shows, well, there was one, I forget which one it was now, that gave me a bonus. Uh, oh, Willard Waterman was in um, Those Websters. Do you remember Willard Waterman? Sure. February McGee. I mean, uh, Rick Gildersleeve later on. Right, right. Oh, it was just terrific, and well, I guess I didn't meet Janet Waldo until I joined PPB. She was such a sweetheart. Yes, she is. There's just so many people that I met. Harry Zimmerman was the musical director at KHJ, and I did, I, I got the contact produce something that he was on, I think it was called Harmony and Wax, or not, no, I don't remember. Do you remember uh, uh, an announcer called Merrill Ross? I've heard that name. I don't remember him right, right off hand. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, there was a Rhapsody in the Wax was the very late, just before sign-off program on KHJ. And uh, he announced something one night uh, by Rachmaninoff. <laughs> Everybody laughed. Wow. Not well enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Hugh Brundage. You remember Hugh Brundage? I do, yes. Oh, he had the most wonderful voice, and he was a nice guy. 
and uh, he used to sign off uh, KHJ at night, and I loved, used to love to hear him do it. <laughs> a great voice. Ooh. Tell me a little bit about your experience at uh, Washington State. What did you do up there? Well, um, I majored in, well, it was actually, uh, uh, oh dear, what do you call it? Radio? Well, it Huh? Radio? No, I, I went. To, I worked there at the radio station sometimes. Almost married a guy from there, <laughs> and uh, but I was I dated two guys from there, and that made it very difficult. <laughs> oh boy! Did you say you went there once? No, my, no. I, I said I almost went there. Oh, okay. Well, it's well, just wonderful. Just wonderful. Loved it. You know, it's a small, small uh, town, a small college, but it was just, I, oh. I was I tended to go there for a couple of years and then come back to face oh. at Berkeley, mm. but you make your friends up there and oh my gosh, you can't do that. <laughs> no, of course not. Well, I have news for you, Mary Mill, it's not a small college anymore. Yeah, I guess that's right. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> lived up to its name obviously absolutely right well that was that was the freshman dorm uh -huh. and then it went up on the hill and that was much better <laughs> oh that's good so you didn't yeah, it was so you didn't take any radio courses while you were there oh yeah um it was funny uh the guy that was the instructor in, in the radio classes uh I, I think I, I impressed him more than vice versa because uh, I wrote a paper on something and it was one I had used in high school. <laughs> oh. So, because uh, at, at LA High, we had, I had a radio class and Frank Brzee was in it and uh, we did some, I forget what it was now, but one, uh, what was his name? Uh, Very famous man. Well, anyway, I'm sorry I can't remember his name, and he, I should because he's so famous. Can, can you give me a hint? What did he do? Um, he wrote a lot of wonderful stuff, and I guess it, that's not how it will me. Okay, well, you're you're at Washington State. You went all four years there, did you? Yes. Uh huh. Got gotcha. you. I meant to come down and finish up at Berkeley, but uh, I met so many nice people up there, I just uh, couldn't leave. So you got your bachelor's degree from Washington State University, Washington State College, WSC. Right. And uh, that was in in radio then, or some other course. Well, it was a what do you call it, a kind of course. Commun uh, communications? No. It was one where I could have a lot of different... Did I have a major? Uh, I don't remember now. But it was a, it was a, oh, what do you... Cuts across a lot of lines. You can, I took secretarial training to fall back on, and I was glad I did. <laughs> oh, good for you. But I took, I took physics, I took, uh, uh, philosophy. Oh boy, that was wonderful. I had a couple of, well, one particular terrific uh, professor. And English was, I guess, sort of my 
my main major. Yeah. Had a wonderful professor. Oh, gosh, he was good. They said, don't get him. His name was Murray Bundy, Murray F. Bundy. And uh, said, don't get him for this humanities course because he's really hard. Get somebody, get somebody else. Well, I wound up with Bundy, and he was so fantastic. Mm. I took him every semester after that. He taught Shakespeare, and oh, oh. he was so good. He was, he was tough. He'd ask uh, a question about whatever the play was, and he'd look up and down the, the rows and say, Miss Knudsen, and you, you'll go, oh. <laughs> but he was just so good. He was just marvelous. I really enjoyed that. I, well, as I say, after I had been that, that first uh, uh, semester in, in uh, humanities, I took care of a course in uh, whatever different whatever the play was, or whatever the well, Shakespeare, you know. Right. And it was just wonderful. Oh, I had such a good time. Oh my gosh. I know one of the one of the uh, my girlfriend I was that I was a roommate in down on Mud Hollow. Uh, we moved up to Davis Hall, and. Uh, okay. Well, you're, let's, you've graduated from Washington State, and then yeah. what? Did you come back to Los Angeles, or what? Yes, and I thought uh, this time I might uh, try Paramount you know, to, instead of uh, radio. Uh, I can always go back to KHJ, but... Uh, which I think I did, but I tried Paramount first, and they interviewed me and said, uh, "Oh wait a minute! I think I had not. I was only uh, between in my between my junior and senior year. I was coming home for the summer, and so I said, uh, "Well, she had on the interview. She said uh, they didn't." They always filled the secretarial positions from the steno pool, and so I, I, I made out the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the application. Yeah, right. And so when I got home later, the gal called me and she said, "Well, this has never happened, but uh, we have happened to have an opening for a secretary in the music legal department, but nobody here has any musical background, and we noticed that you have." music in your uh, on your application and uh, well in the meantime I had gotten my job back at KHJ and I said oh thank you so much that, that's this wonderful but I have to tell you I've decided to go back to and finish up my senior year and um, it wouldn't be fair to you to take it you know to uh, take it for just the summer yeah and so, well, actually, that's what happened. Uh, well, what was your musical background? Well, I played the piano and I sang. Oh. And, uh... Did you do that in, in grade school or high school? Well, I was in play production in high school. And, uh... I was an assistant director and a lot of stuff. And I, when things were, uh... Well, like Romeo and Juliet, for instance. I was the assistant director, and <laughs> which wound up with me, you know, because it was uh, in Romeo and Juliet or whatever the thing. They didn't have watches, so I wound up with both arms full of people's watches. <laughs> oh. As assistant director to, you know, protect their watches. And uh, I hadn't thought about that kind of stuff. That was something... Oh my goodness! And our our uh, play production teacher was named Ed Winnie, and he lived in a, well, I don't know what was it the Pilgrimage Bowl. He he worked up there. I forget what the deal was now, but that was interesting. He married the lady who was in charge of. Uh, well, the choral group at, uh, at at high school, and in those days, you know, they were at odds because 
he was doing the uh, play production and she was doing the music and uh, sometimes those paths crossed and you know the same people were in in both and uh, so that was not too good but he wound up marrying her so <laughs> I guess it was all right so you're back at KHJ for the summer and then to go back to Pullman for your senior year well yes I um, and I think I went back at, to uh, KHJ after that well as I say when I came back from yeah I, I'm getting a little confused on the on the time now but uh I worked at KHJ first down at uh, on Melrose. Yeah. Fifty-five, fifteen Melrose. Is that place still extant? I don't know. I don't either. But boy, that was a great place. Right next down to well, it was called uh, can't remember the restaurant. Just uh, down toward uh, Paramount. Right. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It later became uh, one of the Nicodels. Uh-huh. Remember that restaurant? I've heard that the was, name. Uh huh. It was on um, on Melrose, and uh, the other one was up on. Uh, oh dear, that was a nicer one. Anyway, oh, just so many memories. Right. So you're back, you're out of college now, and you're back in uh, in L.A., living alone at, at this point, or living with your parents still, or. Uh yeah, and. Uh, Which. No, I was living with my parents uh-huh. at first. Then my father, my mother was a little bit domineering, and uh, so he finally took off and you're- went back to La Habra. Your dad did. Yeah, because he, he had a brother that lived down there. Uh-huh. And uh, so they lived together for a while. Oh, and my uncle was uh, Thurston Knudsen. He was, uh, had a, was a fantastic musician. And he also had gone to Tahiti. And, well, I don't know exactly what point in his career, but he went there and he... Um, went all over the island and he became a drummer. He did, in fact, he made a couple of albums of uh, Tahitian music. Hmm. And uh, Lordy, I haven't thought about this in years. So <laughs> and he was a Phi Beta Kappa at uh, Cal, I guess it was, Berkeley. Right. Well, I got myself a key at the Washington State. Did you? Uh-huh. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> that was terrific. So, you, so you came back to KHJ in, what, in the same job that you had before? Were you an usherette still? Well, let me think. Uh, when, um, I can't remember exactly about the date, but... I went up to the, when they were, when they uh, moved up to Vine Street, 1313 Vine Street, and they did, that was for, for, more for television. I'm trying to think of the people that, oh gosh, they're just, all the people I worked with were just so mm-hmm. wonderful. <clears throat> Golly. Okay. And associated with, you know, that. I got to meet that way, man. KHJ TV was channel nine in those days, or thirteen. No, 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 not thirteen. It was it was nine. Nine, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's now KCAL. <laughs> right. Okay. So they had beautiful studios up on the thirteen thirteen line, North Line. And your job there was what? Oh, let's see. I, uh, well, I was in traffic, for one thing. And, uh, uh I, I guess the, the, the 5515 Melrose was, I just, that was my beginning. Oh, wow. Was that wonderful? 
but uh, what did I do up in the other place? Uh, I was in the traffic department, and I used to work up at the Hollywood Bowl as an usherette. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> I worked in the upper boxes, uh, and Lucille Ball's mother was in that group. And then later on, I I became a splitter, which you know, I was down in the, on the first, I guess they call it promenade that, that went across. And it was between the upper boxes and the lower boxes. And there was this darling little old lady that uh, was in the lower boxes. And they had uh, Faust one night with, uh, I don't remember who played Faust, but uh, Nadine Connor was Nick Ayala, and uh, Jerome Hines, all six foot seven of him, was Mephistopheles. Mm. So at the intermission, I'm standing there in the, on the promenade, and uh, this little old lady came up and she says, well, she says, I wouldn't mind going to hell if the devil looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <clears throat> I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, I don't know. I just wandered around and <laughs> talked to them, and I just met a bunch of people that I hadn't met before, and it was just yeah terrific. Buddy, uh, oh, Buddy Bear, and his golden locks. I was, my cousin came over uh, to visit me, and we were walking around, and, and uh, Buddy Bear went by, and Joanne says. Gosh, his hair looks just like yours. <laughs> ah, I'll be oh, Interesting. Yeah. Well, how long were you at KHJ? Well, at, and at 55.15, I was there from about, uh, well, I was still in high school. So I would say 45 or 6. And then I... I think it was after I graduated from college, I went back to 1313. Was that uh, before Tommy Lee jumped off the Wiltern building? I don't know. Anyway, a lot of things happened. Uh, so how many years were you at KHJ total, do you recall? Well, gee, from high school uh, until, well, I come back at, uh, you know, I was going to college and, and uh, maybe I worked there during the summertime, I probably did. Right. It's hard to remember. Do you remember when you, did you retire from KHJ? Well, let me think. You mentioned you had worked with uh, Ralph Edwards. Yes, that was, let me see. Did you actually work for uh, Ralph? For Ralph Edwards? Well, actually, I worked in his home. I, wor I was his secretary for his wife. Oh, I see. But I... <sighs> I'm trying to put two and two together as to how I happened to do that. You know, time-wise, I just can't remember what came first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah, right. I know how it is. There was just, there was just so many things that it just came into the line. And it all seems like just yesterday, doesn't it? Oh, it does. <laughs> I was going to tell you about some of the shows that was... Out of fifty five fifteen. Yeah. What were your favorite what were your favorite shows? Well, uh Family Theater was one of them. Father Patrick Payton. Oh. Uh did uh was responsible for that. Yes, I remember. And we used to have De Dennis Day came in one time and and coming down the stairs he I said he said I forget how it was, but I asked him to repeat whatever it was. He said, Howdy, bub. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to do that. Oh, what a great guy. Yes. Red Shields and C.H. Brundage. 
Uh, Johnny Biolani, do you ever hear of him? No, don't know him. He was the program director, and uh, Tony Alfano was the uh, head announcer. And uh, Bob Forward was the production manager at 5515. Right. And oh my gosh, what great people. I'll bet. In fact, well, I went to Tony Lafano's funeral. It was just terrible. <clears throat> anyway. A lot of wonderful people in our business, Mary Mill. Oh, I tell you, I just love it. Yeah. I just love it. Well, I used to love it. I I'm not so happy with A lot of fun. Maybe. Things have changed, though, these days. Uh, I don't know that I would want to go back now and work in the same business today. Really? Well, I sure don't like going to the board meetings anymore. No. I'm going to stop doing that as soon as I come off the board in June. Are you? Because it's a 70-mile round-trip commute for me, and it's I don't much feel like going on the freeways these days. Well, I bet not. My gosh. Yeah. Well, I think you're terrific. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you, um, if, I must, if I'm not mistaken, you are a charter member of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters, are you not? That's right. How did it get started? Do you recall? Well, yeah. Art Gilmore uh, said that, uh, why were we sending so much money back to the broadcast pioneers in New York? And uh, so we started our own Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters, mm -hmm. which our wonderful branding committee didn't like the name of. They liked Pacific, but they didn't like broadcasting. Uh -huh. And they didn't like pioneers. Oh, my God. So I, how I wound up on that branding committee we only did it by telephone. And I just, I said, what do you mean? Of course we're broadcasting. Uh, you know, whatever you're doing in the business, you're a pioneer, whether it's uh, <clears throat> like Mary Beth Garber, uh, media, And what, and what was the broadcasting thing? I said, uh, well, I don't care where you are. If you're on a flying saucer, you're still broadcasting. This was the argument back in the 60s when you were forming the, uh, the organization? Oh, no, 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 no. This was, uh, oh, in the last couple of three years when they decided oh. they didn't like the Pacific Pioneer broadcast. Yeah, yeah. But we, we were talking about back at the very beginning. Art Gilmore and a lot of illustrious people were were charter members, weren't they? Edgar, you betcha. Edgar Bergen, Febra McGee. Yeah, Jim Jordan. Yeah. And uh, Ralph oh Edwards. My God. Wasn't wasn't Ralph Edwards a member? Oh yeah. Yeah. What what a wonderful guy. Yes. I used to sit. I had lunch with his wife uh, on this big bar, and they had a. Chef has <laughs> prepared our lunch. Oh, it was marvelous. And I would do shopping for her, and uh, that wasn't really my bag, but. <laughs> well, it goes along with the territory, I suppose. <laughs> yes, that's right. And they were just wonderful people, just wonderful. Yeah. Well, I was so lucky. That's what I mean. My whole career has been just right. so wonderful. Did you ever marry? No, I didn't. Did you? I, no, I was a jerk. My mother didn't like as well as well. The first guy I met, I was one with two guys in college, and the one says, "Well, I'm not marrying your mother." <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I'm still. Uh, he died. Uh, he was exactly five years minus. Three and a half hours older than I. <laughs> I'll be darn. Huh. And uh, then the other one. Well, I I just most of my life was with him, but I my mother decided she didn't like him, and I finally figured out later that she was afraid he would take me away from her. 
so I let her get away with it. Uh oh. Mistake number one or two? <laughs> well, I think it was number two. Number two, okay. Well, you've had... Like, but I've had a wonderful life, just a wonderful I life. I was just going to say, it sounds to me like you've had a spectacular life, one, that, <laughs> one that's full of wonderful memories for you. And oh, that, it does. I'm more, I think of things more often, like uh, when I'm going to sleep, and I thank the Lord for all this yeah. he's given me. It's just wonderful. That's great. <laughs> Well, Mary Mail, it's been wonderful talking with you today. Well, so likewise. You're, I just think you're so great, and I think it's a shame that you're going to give it up, but I sure understand why. Well, that's the reason, and uh, I'll still be on board with the uh, the website, however, because I can do that from home. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I think you're just terrific. I just You do so much for the organization. Well, I, I give my two cents worth, that's for sure. That's right. <laughs> Okay, Mary Mill, good to talk with you again. We've been Thank speaking, you so much. we've been talking today with Mary Mill Knudsen, a board member of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. This interview was recorded on March the 31st in 2016. My name is Jerry Fry. I'm the audio historian for Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters, thanking you very much for listening. <laughs>